Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to New Beginnings Coffeehouse Church. Hope everyone is doing well this morning. We are going to start out this morning uh, back in Luke chapter 6, where we had left off talking about the disciples, the call of, this, the, of the disciples, that Jesus had picked 12. He had many, many followers at this time. And he knew he had to select 12 to pour his life into them where he could have an intimate relationship with them to be able to carry on his work. And we find that list in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, uh, or verse 13. It says, when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. There was Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who is called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. So I've, I've been spending some time with the disciples because in the past we, we don't know much about the disciples, but there isn't a lot revealed in the scriptures about them. Uh, basically because it's not about the disciples, but about who they followed that they would carry this word into the world, the good news of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Savior, as the Lord God Almighty. And he picked them, and as we've gone through their stories of James and John, the sons of thunder, the rambunctious boys, uh, Andrew, who's the people person, always intermixing with the crowd and uh, kind of a shadow figure. And then the next set is uh, Philip and Nathaniel and Matthew and Thomas. And we talked about those last those guys last week, which it's very comforting to see the different personalities that come through that God isn't looking for some extraordinary people. He's taking normal, common, everyday people, uneducated, not qualified. We have Phil, Philip who is so in the here and now, uh, he can't see the bigger picture and, and Christ is trying to lift his eyes. We, we've seen him in different passages and then also we had uh, Nathaniel who right away he was prejudiced toward that man from Nazareth but once he experienced Christ he said oh my Lord you are the chosen one uh, and he the rest of the time was just watching Christ reveal himself and just saying, yes, yes, this is the one. This is the one I was looking for. And then you had Matthew, who's back uh, in the background, quiet, very humble. Um, he knows the depths of what, what he was saved from and he truly knew who Christ was. And then you had Thomas, who was the negative uh, negative hero. Um, pessimistic, but he loved the Lord so much that he did not want to be separated from him. Uh, that was his worst fear. And uh, he just couldn't believe that Christ had come back. And... Uh, he got the proof he needed. Jesus tenderly tells him, feel, see, have the proof that's there. 
And Thomas, uh, he, he did not want to be separated from the Lord. It show, it really revealed the depths of his love. And now we want to look at four more. There's not a lot said about the next set. We've got, uh, as I've said, uh, they're broken up into three groups of four. Each has a leader. Peter's the leader of the first four, but he's actually Protoss, the the first over all the disciples. Um, God really has to work on him. Christ, um, and and I I'm going to take next week just to talk about Peter um, because we have his whole life story uh, as far as his relationship with the Lord right before us and how God takes just a brash, bold man, impulsive and vacillating and has to change and work in his life and drain him of himself and to become Peter the Rock, the, um, the lead apostle. And uh, so I want to take some time with him, but the, the second group, Philip was the leader. Um, there's four different places where the apostles are named, the disciples are named, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then Acts chapter 1 um, gives the list also. And always at the beginning of those groups, um, it's always Peter, it's always Philip leading that group, and then in the last four um, is James the Lesser. Um, so in this kind of obscure background group, we have James the Lesser, and then uh, James, or, or Judas the son, uh, also known as Thaddeus, and then we have Simon the Zealot, and then finally Judas Iscariot, who was not a believer, um, but he was in this mix, and Christ had appointed him to this group for a purpose. And let's look at James, son of Alphaeus. He has not much about him, but we have to look at his name, first of all. Son of Alphaeus. Um, James is called the lesser Mark 1540 calls him James the Micros. Uh, the word Micros means little or less. Uh, this really shows the background part of James, that he is uh, obscure, and they're not sure if that name actually meant that he was physically small or that he was the younger James, um, but he, he had this name all the way through. So uh, he was a background person, he was quiet, and we know from Jesus picking this man that Christ does not depend on superstars at all. Uh, it, it's amazing with his selection of these disciples that no one is worthy. No one is qualified. Uh, think of Paul. Paul had said, I know that there is nothing good that dwells in me. And, and that brings out this essence of, you know, I, I don't think I'm good enough. I'm not. And it, and it takes... Walking with Jesus, you, you learn that your physical strengths, your talents, uh, all these things, they, they get in the way of God's work because we depend on them too much. And, and it's when the Lord empties us, he finally finds us useful. And I used to think this was a problem. I used to look at you know, usually Christian shows they would show somebody has their life all together and it's wonderful and it's like all the emphasis is on that person. But now I've seen through life's experiences that God t 
takes us and shapes us and starts to wean us off of our own pride, our own confidence in ourself to finally come to that place where we need him. We need him desperately and we need his power and we need his strength. We need his peace, his comfort, everything he has to offer and just submit to him and say, Lord, use me. Now I understand that God can use each one of us, a, a quiet person like James the Lesser. He can do a miraculous, miraculous things through him because James would go on to preach. And uh, the Lord selected him to do the quiet work. He's harnessed to the chariot of Jesus and he does his work in obscurity. There's countless unknown people that serve the Lord. Uh, prayer warriors, uh, support people, um, those who show hospitality. Uh, but it's always God who picks those who are lowly, weak, meek, and as 1 Corinthians points out, the uneducated, the ignoble, uh, the non-intellect, he can use them. Because it's not the messenger, it's the message. I have no power. I have nothing, nothing to offer the Lord but myself giving the message is the power in the message of the cross, the message of Jesus. So it doesn't matter what my personality, what a person's personality is, their marketing schemes, programs, confidence. It's all the power of God. Um, it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's the genius of God. How many times have I said that? The genius of God. It's all His grace. It's His grace that saves. His grace that sanctifies us and it is his grace that empowers us to do his work it's wonderful so james the less tradition has told us through the ages that he was sent into persia iran uh, that's what we know it as today and he preached the gospel and he preached it to the extent extent that he was crucified as well and as I think about this it's all all the disciples except for John were martyred and so their message was pointed it, it's dealing with uh, the judgment sin righteousness in a holy God that people need to have their eyes open to the dark news and then that grace that beautiful news of Christ is the good news comes in to save us um, it's it's a pointed message especially today because the mess Christ is all about teaching teaching the message and showing it through our lifestyle as well but uh, they died for what the Lord called them to. Amazing. So he preached the gospel and was crucified for preaching it. So that's James. We have no mention of anything he said in the gospels. So he's obscure. Secondly, we have Judas. Now, Judas means Jehovah leads. And this is Judas, son of James. Not to be confused with Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. Okay, And poor Judas, whenever he's mentioned, it's always Judas, not the one who betrayed the Lord. Okay, So I'm sure he had to go through the rest of his life. No, I'm not that Judas, except they knew Judas had died but uh, killed himself, Judas Iscariot. <clears throat> but this Judas, he is uh, 
was known as Trinomus. He, he has three names. Um, he's Judas, and he's also known as Thaddeus. Thaddeus means breast child. So we are to, to deduce that he was more than likely a young man um, who was a mama's boy type. Um, his, his other name was Labius, which means heart child. Um, so we're getting a picture of this younger man who is more than likely tender-hearted, uh, sweet-spirited, that is part of this group. Um, it's kind of funny. You've got the Sons of Thunder. you got Peter, who's very outspoken. And then you have Simon the Zealot, who we're going to talk about next. And then thrown in with this mix is this young uh, breast child. <laughs> or a heart child, um, this little mama's boy. His, his mama must have really um, uh, hovered over him, the helicopter mom type, who knows. But he was picked, and we have one glimpse of him in John 14. So if you turn with me to John 14, we can pick up the verses here. We, we covered this already because Jesus is comforting his disciples before he leaves. And it was this whole part of saying, I am going off to prepare a place for you. Um, I'll come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? So Thomas, of course, does not want to be separated from Jesus. He's, he's, he loves Jesus, and he doesn't want him to go anywhere. And Jesus tells him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know me and have seen me. And of course, Philip, of course, here Philip speaks up and says, "Lord, show us the Father that will that'll be enough for us." And Jesus answered, kind of harshly here, because Philip is the material guy, um, the counter. Um, Jesus has to tell him, "Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you such a long time." Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe I am in the Father and the Father is me, in me? So he, he's laying that out to Philip. And then down in verse 22, it says, Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the world? So Judas gets it. He sees Christ as the good news, as the wonderful Savior. And he knows it. And he's like, we've experienced amazing things walking with you. We see it. It's plain right in front of us. And you're demonstrating it in front of the world, all these other people, and yet they do not get it. Why don't you reveal yourself to everybody like you have to us? Legitimate question, right? And Jesus replied, and this is tenderly to Jude, he says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. 
They belong to the Father who sent me. So Jesus is telling him, look, you, you love me. I know you know me. You love me. But anybody who does will obey what I say. What They'll listen to me. They'll listen to me. It's like uh, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. That's what Jesus had said. Uh, I know my sheep and they know me. They know my voice because they listen to me and they obey. That's what he's saying here. And my father will love them. He will take care of those who he's given me and will come to them and make their house home with them. Um, but he said, not everybody will love me. And they'll show it because they will not obey my teaching. They will discount the word of God. They will. The word of God is Christ, him revealing himself to the world. And as I've said, it's more than just it's more than just love your neighbor as yourself. It, it's way more than that. That's why we're going through this study to walk with Jesus and see what it means to have him as your Savior as well as your Lord. It's submitting to every aspect of God's Word. If it's contrary to what I believe, I will submit to the word because God is right. And I am just a man with opinions. And when my opinions don't match up with the word, it's it's wrong. <laughs> it's uh, a lie. It's deceit. Um, and there are many, many, many who say they love Jesus or accept him, but they do not obey his word. They don't even know his word, number one. And number two, they deny him by their actions, by their words, by their thinking. And I can think of many, many illustrations of that. But for us who know him, to walk with him is to say, yes, I will obey your teaching. Whatever you say, Lord, yes. Yes. And he tells Jude, he goes on to say in verse 25, all this I have spoken while still with you. I've, I've revealed all this to you. Me personally, I'm here with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, Jude, you, you will not be alone here. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit is coming, whom the Father will send in my name, and he will teach you all things and will, will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The world gives and takes back or only if it benefits them. But I give you my peace. And it's permanent. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So he, he's talking to Jude. I'm calling him Jude. Jude is uh, in a tender-hearted way um, because Jesus says, I can only reveal myself to a loving, obedient heart. Someone who is submitting to me, trusting me, and loving me as a Savior. And is Lord. Lord God Almighty. Lord <laughs> the Creator. Uh, so that's the only scripture on Judas, Thaddeus. But tradition has it that he traveled and preached the word. He healed a man named Hadgar, uh, king of Syria. 
and this king became a believer in Christ. But he had a nephew that was jealous, and he had Judas killed um, by being clubbed to death. So, an ending which seems sad, but for Judas, he knew. He knew the love of the Lord. He knew the tenderheartedness of, of Jesus, and he was going to go to that place that Jesus was preparing for him, and he was not afraid at all. So that brings us to Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot. This is quite an odd mixture of men, that's for sure. The master's men. He picks a zealot. The word is cannonian, which in Hebrew means jealous or passionate. And they are passionate for the law of God, for God's word. Uh, we have... During this time, I've walked about walked through the different types of spiritual leaders. You had the Pharisees, the Sadducees. The Pharisees were the lawyers, the legal, to make sure everybody lived by the law. Uh, the Sadducees were the political leaders. They were the liberal uh, teachers. They didn't believe in the supernatural, uh, Satan miracles, none of that. Um, so it was all down to the letter of the law, but they were all about politics. Then you had the priests who took care of the sacrifices. Um, then you had the Essenes who disappeared off uh, monk in monkish styles uh, off on their own. Then you had the zealots. These people, they were red hot patriots. They were living in Israel, God's promised land, and they hated any pagan power. And they had the Greeks in the past occupy their territory, and now the Romans are there. And there was many, many uprisings uh, before Jesus came on the scene. Right before Jesus came on the scene, there was one large uprising. Um, that's why Pontius Pilate was really skittish about Christ and what to do with him, for sure, um, because he had other uprisings that the word was getting back to Rome, and uh, he was worried about his position. But these zealots had outright uprising revolts, and they were shut down. So now it was to the point around Jesus' time where it was all guerrilla warfare. Uh, these guys were terrorists. They would stab Roman soldiers in the back um, and slide away. Uh, so they had a deep-seated hatred for the Romans and their pagan gods. And Simon was a part of this group. So was Judas Iscariot as well. But Simon the Zealot, we don't know how he was called to the Lord, but he is picked. He's a disciple. More than likely, he knows his Old Testament really well and sees Jesus as the Messiah and follows him. Now, this is quite a... When I talk about all these different mix of 12 characters, we have... Simon the Zealot, who would go to the extent of even killing their, his own countrymen if they've sold out the country. And so he's being called into this group with Christ, and he's in this group with Matthew, the tax collector, who has sold out his own people. And so you have two opposites here following Christ. You have Simon the Zealot, who would hate somebody like Matthew, who was ripping off his own people uh, for the sake of greed. But Jesus takes this Simon the Zealot 
and takes his enthusiasm, his loyalism, his savageness, his warrior instinct, and changes his direction to use it properly, to have a true, true zeal for the word. Uh, in other words, to not take life, but to give life, to give life of Jesus Christ, to proclaim that message. So this is amazing. So that's all we have about Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot isn't mentioned anywhere else. Uh, he's in all the lists of disciples, but he never speaks. He's, he's in obscurity. And you would think he would make a name for himself, but uh, it, it is noted that he did go on to preach all the way in the British Isles. Uh, he traveled to Egypt and Africa uh, preaching the good news and finally they had to shut him down by sawing him in half and Simon the Zealot was willing to die for the aspiration of Christ that was his motivation so that leaves us with Peter and Judas Iscariot and I want to spend time with Peter next week and the week after that to look at Judas Iscariot uh, to look at his deception um, that he willingly was led into betraying his own Savior his own Jesus that he's walking amongst uh, it is hard to believe that he's in the 12 and never ever gets it never ever and, Ju and Jesus knows this he picked him as one of the disciples amazing so that gives us another three to the 12 disciples I really want you to think about especially the obscurity part that God can and will use us because we are apostolos just like the apostles to be sent out. We are to be disciples. When, when Jesus told his disciples to um, go into all the world um, making disciples of all people, that means teaching them to help them along in their walk to experience Jesus, um, to, to be like we're doing here, to have the truth revealed to them so that they may know God. Um, this is baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says, I'll be with you. I'll be with you till the, till the end of time. I will be with you. And he is. And he's empowering us. So it is so important for us, again, to wake up in the morning, say, Lord, I don't want to do this on my own today. Give me the strength. Give me the power. Give me the wisdom to carry me through. Give me opportunity to speak your message, to reveal your word, and to show your love. This world really needs it because it's devoid of the two greatest things and that's truth and love love that is true <laughs> that is based on truth um, so we have a wonderful week uh, let me close in prayer father thank you for your word thank you that you have picked the unqualified and that we are we fit the bill we are unworthy. We're unqualified. Sometimes we think, Lord, what can you even do with me? But we are called to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, to, to know the depth, width, height of his love 
for us. And there is nothing impossible that God cannot do through us. So, Father, we are faithful people relying on you and not ourselves. Do amazing and mighty things for us. Father, thank you for those you have led here today. I ask that you draw those who are hungry for the word, that desire the meat to, to, to know you. Bring them to us. Father, and may we also speak and invite others. Lead us in Jesus' name. Thank you. We praise your glorious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.